this flashlight has a light bulb in it. In order for this light bulb to work, ultimately a potential difference must be set up between the contacts in order to allow current to flow. It was Michael Faraday who first experimentally observed that a potential difference could be created if magnetic field lines were cut by a conducting loop. The concept of cutting field lines is known as flux. Ultimately, the relationship developed by Michael Faraday, today known as Faraday's Law, is a statement about the rate of change of flux, or how quickly magnetic field lines are cut by a conducting loop. Flux is the key to understanding how a potential difference can be created. All right, now we're in business. We can start taking back um, some of our observations, rather, we'll go back to our induction coils here in just a moment and start explaining some of the observations that we have seen. But we're now in a position to uh, review. Let's do one more review of our definition of flux because these definitions are going to help us understand what it is that we're actually observing in those induction coils. So if our definition of flux is B A cosine of theta, what we can see here is that, that the flux is directly proportional to the magnetic field, which means that as the magnetic field strength goes up, so does the magnetic flux. We can also see that the flux is directly proportional to the cross-sectional area, okay, or A cosine of theta. Okay, and we recognize that as A cosine of theta goes up, we recognize that the magnetic field also goes up. Okay, well, regarding units, this is our definition of flux, and we recognize that for units, the unit of magnetic field is the Tesla, and we recognize that the unit of area is meter squared. So the units for magnetic flux are Tesla meters squared. Okay, now when it comes back to our induction coils, let's go back and make some more observations of those. Okay, we'll put our coils back up here. We'll take our magnet, we'll just stick with the North Pole at the moment. Okay, let's focus on the big coil here. Check it out. One more observation here as I go in and I come out. Okay, well in this case, everything that we've seen so far here has had the cross-sectional area be the thing that rotates or moves. But when it comes to the induction coil, you can see that there is no change in the area. There's no change in the cross-sectional area or the exposed area of the coil. As we look right down the cross-sectional area of that coil, you can see that its orientation remains constant relative to the orientation of the magnetic field. Well, there is flux that is changing here, but it's not because of the cross-sectional area. To communicate that, we look back again at... We look back again at a magnet. If we look at the cross-sectional area of this magnet here, let's uh, put a big giant loop here, and this will represent, this right here will represent our coil. Okay, here's our coil, and let's draw a big magnetic field here, or a big magnet. Okay, we'll call this the North Pole. Now remember that with magnetic field, we have field lines that come out and bend all through this coil. Okay, we have field lines that come up like this, some more that go up. Oh, I'm getting my symmetry off a little bit here. There we go. Okay, no two field lines cross, bad teacher. Okay, there we go. All right, when it comes to a magnet, what we see is these, these field lines butterfly out. Now, of course, where are they going? They're going to seek the south pole of that magnet and come back in again. 
but you see a large you see a large butterfly effect here now check it out when I bring this magnet closer to the coil you can see that more of these lines more of these lines will be exposed all right for this visual let me use my big loop here okay if I have it right here you can see that maybe these two penetrate the loop okay so we have two field lines penetrating the loop but if I bring it up to this point you know now we've got this line this one this one this one this one maybe that one maybe not I don't know but as we come closer and closer you see that more and more field lines begin to penetrate this cross-sectional area and when I'm right on top of the magnet everything is crossing through here so in this case we're not changing the area by rotating or the exposed area we're varying the flux by virtue of making more field lines enter or leave based on the location of the magnet itself and you can see ouch that hurt that you can see as we bring the north pole of the magnet see even out here watch the needle watch the needle I'm just gonna make it go I'm gonna make it move from out here can you see that it's barely moving and the magnet isn't even in the coil okay but as I as as I do this same thing I'm gonna try to go only this far into the coil okay watch this okay can you see how the deflection became greater all right deflection became greater there because more lines from the tip of this North Pole are entering the coil now as I run all of those lines through each one of those loops you see that maximum flux is penetrating both entering and leaving so you've seen the two types of ways to modify the flux you can have a field that relative to an exposed area the whole area moves but you notice the exposed area doesn't change it's still all exposed but we regulate by moving the magnet closer we regulate the number of field lines that penetrate it therefore varying the magnitude of the magnetic field okay that's how we vary the magnitude of the magnetic field remember that we use field lines to communicate strength of field okay so a cosine theta isn't changing in this case but the number of field lines therefore the magnitude of the magnetic field is changing now in our previous demonstrations uh, visuals with respect to the light in our frame we saw that the uh, the light remained constant but the area changed okay so we've seen both types of flux in this way okay well it's now time to bring all of our observations plus our understanding of flux together to define what is called Faraday's Law.